Today we're going to talk about calculus in the context of the physics of motion. Now calculus was actually invented to describe the physics of motion and so I think it makes a lot of intuitive sense to talk about calculus in the context of motion because motion is something that we experience daily. You know we understand things like distance and speed and velocity and acceleration because we've experienced it. So the first thing I want to do is look at some of these terms. We want to define some of these terms. Uh, let me scroll down. Um, in physics, these terms have a very precise meaning. For example, the difference between distance and displacement. So the distance you are from something is just a measurement. It doesn't tell you anything about direction. So I might be 10 miles west of Minneapolis and you might be 10 miles to the east of Minneapolis. So our, dis our distances are the same, but we're obviously not in the same position, right? Um, distance is considered to be a scalar measurement. It just measures how far you are from something regardless of the direction. But displacement is a vector quantity and vector quantities have both magnitude and direction. So I am 10 miles west and you're 10 miles east. Okay, so the displacement includes the direction. Now with linear motion, we usually use um, a positive or negative sign to indicate direction. So imagine that we draw a, a straight line between your position and my position with Minneapolis at the center and we can choose um, say east to be the positive direction, then you would be at a positive 10 miles from Minneapolis and I would be at a negative 10 miles from Minneapolis. So there's a similar distinction between um, speed and velocity. So uh, I might be traveling say 60 miles per hour down I-35 going south. You could be traveling 60 miles an hour on I-35 but going north. So our speeds are the same, but our velocities are very different because we're traveling in different directions. And velocity is a vector quantity, just like displacement. Ve velocity has a magnitude and a direction, whereas speed is just the magnitude of the velocity with no direction. Okay. And acceleration is also a vector quantity. It has a magnitude and direction. Now notice that velocity is how uh, displacement is changing over time and acceleration is how velocity is changing over time. So the derivative of your displacement is velocity and the derivative of velocity is acceleration, which means that acceleration is actually the second derivative of displacement, right? So let me scroll down here to this next box here. So this is what this shows that um, the velocity is a derivative of displacement. So this s, s equals f of t, um, we're using s to, to, to um, as the variable for displacement. We could like to use d, right? <laughs> but you can see that in our Leibniz notation, uh, we're already using d, right? We're already, already using a d, so we're using s for displacement. So if we define the displacement to be f of t, then velocity is a derivative of displacement and then the magnitude. So again, if, if we're just doing, if we're just dealing with motion in one dimension and we're using a positive negative sign um, to indicate direction, then uh, we can get the speed by just taking the absolute value of the velocity. And then acceleration is the second derivative of the displacement function. All right, let's take a look at this first example here. Oops, let me scroll to the right spot. Um, let me scroll there. Okay, so we have these different objects, A, B, C, and D, and they're moving on a number line. And um, the speeds and the directions are indicated by the arrows, all right? So let's take a look first at, at object A, all right? So object A, um, it shows the position to be at positive two on the number line, right? Um, so we say its displacement is a positive two. Now we could write a plus two if we wanted to, oops, plus two. Um, or we, but we don't necessarily have to put the plus on it. Usually if we just write two, obviously that means it's positive. 
Now it's distance, right? That's its dis displacement from the origin is a positive two. And if we take the absolute value of that, its distance from the origin is also two. And the velocity here is shown, it says it's three units per second. Now I don't know how, you know, maybe it's centimeters. They kind of look like it could be centimeters. <laughs> Depends on your, the scale here, but it doesn't really give any like real units. So we're just going to say units per second. And um, so, and it's moving in the positive direction. Notice it's moving, it's moving to the, to the right. So we would consider that to be in the positive direction. So its velocity is a positive three. And its speed then is just the absolute value, which is also a positive three. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, is the object moving toward or away from the origin? All right. Well, you can tell from the, from the, the arrow, okay, it seems to be moving, it, it's moving away, right? So I'm just going to say away. Okay. All right, so now let's look at object B. Object B, all right, so that's just the one here at six. So again, its displacement is a positive six, or we can just write six. The distance is the absolute value of its displacement, so it's also six. And we're given the the velocity, well, we're given the speed, essentially. Um, it's It's moving at two units per second, but you can tell by the arrow that it's moving to the left, okay? So we're going to say it's the velocity is a negative two units per second. All right. And, um, and then the speed is the absolute value of the, of the velocity. Okay. So we're just defining left as being negative, right? Cause then, um, you can tell in the number line, the negative numbers are on the left. And so is the object moving away? from or toward the origin. And again, okay, just like, just look at the picture. It seems to be moving toward, right? Toward the origin. Okay. All right. That we're going to talk more, more about that in a minute here. That's why I'm, seems a little obvious <laughs> from the picture, but all right, let's move down here. I think I need to make my scale a little smaller here so we can see the picture. Um, at the same time, but uh, well, we can get this one in there. We get to see in there. All right. So um, object C. Now, now we have an object that's to the left of the origin, right? Now you can so it's you can see on the number line it's at negative eight, right? So its displacement is a negative eight, right? The negative indicates that it's to the left of the origin, but its distance from the origin is eight, right? It's just the absolute value of the displacement. The velocity is shown to be five units per second and it's moving to the right. So it's a positive five units per second. And then the speed is just the absolute value, which is still five. Now you can tell here, I'm moving um, toward the origin, right? Because my displacement is negative, but my velocity is positive. So I'm moving toward, toward the origin, okay? Um, and so um, you'll see that when the displacement and the velocity have opposite signs, you're moving toward the origin, just like up here in, with object B, the displacement was positive, but the velocity was met negative. So the displacement and the velocity have opposite signs and we're moving toward the origin. Okay. We have one more here. Let's see here. <laughs> I can scroll down here. I guess you've got the paper in front of you so you can see the, you can see the line, but, um, all right. So object D, it's displacement. Now it's the, the position on the number line is at a negative three, right? So the displacement is negative three and it's a distance from the origin is three, right? It's just the absolute value of the displacement. It's velocity. Okay. So you got to look at the arrow up here. It's velocity is one unit or well, it's, it's one unit per second to the left. Okay, so one unit per second to the left, we're defining left to be negative. So that is a negative one and its speed is just one unit per second, right? So it's the absolute value of that. And is the object moving toward or away from the origin? Well, 
again, let's look at the picture up here, <laughs> um, is obviously moving away, right? It's moving to the left, but and it, it's moving to the left and it's to the left of the origin. So it's moving away, away. Okay, it's moving away. Notice that when displacement and velocity have the same sign, we're moving away from the origin, right? So in for object A, the object was moving was uh, um, to the right of the origin and moving to the right, so it's moving away. And if the object is to the left of the origin and moving to the left, then it's moving away. So when the displacement and velocity are the same signs, um, you're moving away from the origin. And when the displacement and velocity are opposite signs, then um, the objects are moving toward the origin. All right, um, that's all I have for this example. I'll meet you in the next video.